Welcome to the Academy. In the last 52nd episode of our series, together with Matt, we started programming the Intrica control panel and the INT GSM communication module connected to it. We also touched upon the issue of messaging. Today, however, I will focus on configuring the control settings. I will also show you practically some possibilities offered by the INT GSM module in this area. In this episode, I will use a computer with Windows operating system, the Intrigo 128 Plus control panel with power supply and battery, an INT GSM module, two nano SIM cards, a smartphone, an INT TSG keypad, SOW300 and SPW220 sirens, a USB RS converter, and the Deload X configuration program. The presented set has already been pre-configured in the previous episode. We used only one SIM card then. This time I will use two SIM cards from different operators. The settings for the second card have also been already entered. Two partitions, several zones, outputs, and a new user have also been added to the system. To continue the configuration, I enter the local programming mode on the control panel. Open the terminal. Enter the service password and press asterisk to confirm. Next, go to the downloading item and press hash. Use the hash to run the local programming function. Now I start the DLoadX program. Press the button with the wrench symbol on it to select the COM port to which the control panel is connected. Click OK. A window opens to inform you that the report of the alarm system that was configured in the previous episode has been received. Click Yes to confirm. The next window shows information that a connection has been established. Press OK. The data has been read from the control panel. Open the structure window and go to the hardware tab. Find the INT GSM module on the list. Open the INT GSM functions tab and then SMS messaging clip control. In the table you can see the settings entered in the previous episode, including the phone number to be notified about alarms in partition 1. In the INT GSM settings you can enter up to 16 telephone numbers. As we showed you in the previous episode, their users can be notified about various events in the system. The same telephone numbers can be used to control the Intrica system by means of SMS messages and the clip service. Important note, in order to be able to control the system via SMS messages or clip service using a given telephone number, the number should be associated with the user registered in the control panel. It is necessary that the permissions granted to that user enable the activation of selected functions in the assigned partitions. Otherwise, despite the setting of the control commands, control by using the indicated telephone number will not be possible. Now, from the list of available users, I choose the one that will be associated with the phone number entered. Next, I go to the SMS control tab. You can see a table there in which you can program up to 32 control commands. The first column is used to enter the contents of individual commands. Each of them can consist of up to 16 alphanumeric characters. When programming the control commands, you must remember a certain rule. The content of one command must not be included in the content of another. Beside, two sets of typical commands for arming are shown. As you can see, one command in the first set, namely the word arm, is part of the other two commands. This is an incorrect situation. The second set has been prepared correctly, although the content of the messages partially overlaps, none of them is completely contained in another one. The second column is used to select functions that will be triggered by the control commands. There are 15 options available, which I will discuss in a moment. In the third column, you can specify parameters related to the function called, such as numbers of partitions or outputs. In the fourth column, you can select whether the given command can be sent from any phone number. However, selecting the field in the last column will enable the given function to be started according to the parameters sent in SMS message, which are different from those set in the parameters field. I will show you an example of using this solution a bit later. Now I'll go back to the functions that can be associated with the individual control commands. The first of them, that is state text, will make the module send back an SMS with information about the state of mains and emergency power supply, as well as about arming selected partitions. The second function, that is state SYMB, works similarly, but the module responds with an abbreviated SMS message. 
The next functions on the list from the 3rd to the 6th apply to 4 modes of arming. So item 3, arm 0, means arming in full mode. All detectors assigned to the selected partitions will be armed. Item 4 is arm 1, which means full arming plus bypasses. It is responsible for arming the system, excluding detectors that have their bypassed if no exit option enabled. This mode can be used in situations where, for example, the selected detectors in a particular room are not to be armed. Item 5 is the third type of arming, that is, arm 2. It means arming without interior detectors. In this case, all detectors will be armed except for those programmed as Type 3, Interior Delayed 94, Entry Exit Interior and 95, Entry Interior This situation can be used in case when after arming someone has to be able to move around the premises within the range of detectors programmed as Interior. The last mode of arming is item 6 on the list, namely Arm 3. This mode is similar to the previous one, however the system will not start the entry delay countdown. When will it be useful? For example, in a situation where you stay in the premises, want to be able to move around within the range of interior detectors, but also want to be sure that if someone violates, for example, the entry exit zone assigned to the entrance door, the alarm will be triggered instantly. Of course, you can assign partitions to each control command, as well as enable the optional sending parameters in the message. Thus you can arm different partitions in different modes practically at will, adjusting the configuration to the needs of the premises and its users. I will explain the parameter issue in a moment. Function 7 is disarming. You can choose the partitions the command will apply to. I will choose disarming all partitions with one command. However, if for some reason you will have to disarm the selected partitions only, here is how to do so. During the configuration, check the Parameters in SMS field. Thus, when sending a message to the system, you will be able to determine the partitions it will apply to. The command should then have the right form. How the parameter message works, I will show you a bit later. Another solution for separately disarming individual partitions is to program several independent commands, each indicating a different partition. Function number 8 is Alarm Clearing. Here you should also indicate the partitions to which the command applies. Items 9, 10 and 11 are outputs on, outputs off and switch state respectively. For individual commands you can assign outputs individually or in groups, thus becoming able to control the devices connected to them as may be needed. This works well when controlling gates, roller shutter blinds, lighting, sprinklers or other building automation devices. It should be remembered that the outputs which you want to control by using SMS messages must be programmed as one of the following types. 24 25 98 105 or 106 The next three items on the list are 12 bypass zones, 13 isolate zones, 14 unbypass zones. They are used for bypassing or isolating as well as unbypassing the indicated zones in the system. The last available function in SMS control is 15 trigger zone. Violation of zones can have many applications. This option can be used, for example, to control automation or other functions of a given alarm system. However, it should be remembered that this particular function can only apply to one zone at a time. Also, when a parameter command is being sent, it can only contain one zone number for violation. If you enter the numbers of two or more zones, such a command will not be executed. Now let's return to the DLoadX program. Go to the SMS messaging clip control tab. In the last but one column of the table, you can choose what function the user of the indicated telephone number can run by calling the number of the card installed in the module. Click on the function field. You can choose from a whole list of functions we have previously defined in the SMS control tab. For example, I would choose a function that should switch the state of one of the outputs. Finally, we save the data to the module. And that's all there is to configuring the SMS and clip control settings. It is also worth adding that the advanced telephone module used in the INT GSM makes it possible to simultaneously receive SMS messages and incoming calls via both SIM cards. 
With this solution, your commands will be executed by the control panel, regardless of whether you contact the number of SIM1 or SIM2 card. Now I will proceed to check how configuration works in practice. First I will send a message that will arm the system in all partitions. I am sending an SMS to the first SIM card number. OK, the system has been armed. Now I will try to disarm partition 3. To check if the partition has been disarmed, I will send a status check-in message to the system. OK, as you can see, only partitions 1 and 2 are armed, so partition 3 has been disarmed. Now I'll use an SMS message to turn on the outputs to which our sirens are connected. One of the SOW300s is connected to a monostable output which is active for a few seconds, the other one and the SPW220 siren being connected to bistable outputs. The first SOW300 has turned off. I will turn off the other one by sending another message. To turn off the SPW220 siren, I will use the clip control and switch state function. For a change, I will call the number of the second SIM card. The siren has stopped flashing, so I can go on. Finally, I will show you how to trigger cell functions by sending one SMS message. I will also use commands containing parameters. I must also mention that the outputs 6, 7 and 8 are turned on by violating zones which have the same numbers. The activation of these outputs will be signalled by the LEDs on the control panel board. As you can see, several control commands can be sent in one message, provided they are separated from one another with spaces. So I send a whole set of commands at a time. OK, as you can see, all the required actions have been executed. And that's all for today. Thank you. Please watch subsequent episodes of eAcademy. See you soon.